for you. I assume everyone else can. I can All hear right. you, George. <laughs> okay. It's Miss Cassidy. Okay. So here's the lesson, and I'm going to start the Pear Deck portion of it. Okay, I'm going to put this in the chat. Uh oh. Where's the chat? Okay, now I can't find the chat. Oh, there it is. Never mind. So here's the Pear Deck code. And you can click on that, Rodrigo and Jorge. And then uh, you can join the Pear Deck portion of the lesson. You'll have two screens open, this one and the Pear Deck slideshow. And you'll probably, you can hear with this screen open, leave it open, but you will see the lesson on the Pear Deck slideshow portion of it. Okay, is that clear? Is that clear, Rodrigo? Franco? You can say yes in the chat. And um, let me see. Let me start the class. So the first thing you have to do is it's not really something you'll be graded on or anything, um, but it's just an icebreaker. So what kind of animal or car would you like to be and why? Um, you can, could you give me a second to go get my laptop? Of course. So. I don't really know how to go back to the last one because it was a deleted response. Okay, well, I guess we're on to this one. I'm going to wait for, um, I'm going to wait for, okay, you're back? Yes, um, let me just sign in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no worries, Rodrigo. It's fine. Okay, so while we're waiting for him, we can go ahead and go over the objectives. Um, these are TEKS 1 and 2, and uh, what that basically means is we're focusing on comprehension and understanding. Uh, we'll just talk briefly about what our purpose might be for reading the article. We will make a prediction or two along the way. And hopefully with Pear Deck, we'll interact with the material in a little bit, in, in a way. And we will look at the text structure. Um, I chose this article because it does have a sort of an unusual text structure to it, which if, it's, if you understand, it does help with comprehension. Um, uh, which we'll, and we'll go into this a little bit more. This is expository, which means it's basically informative. And so your reasons for reading it might vary, perhaps curiosity, maybe the headline, you know, got, attracted your interest. Um, 
Maybe you like animals. I don't know. So, but that would be why you might read it. It would be to inform yourself of, of what is going on in the article. You want more information. Okay, so uh, the name of this lesson is Little Penguin on the Move or How to Deconstruct Expository Writing. So we will talk about it. Um, I did include slides with information with the actual text, which I will read. I tried to keep them short and I did cut a portion of the text out so that it wouldn't be too long. He needed a little push before speeding backward down a makeshift slide. This is the first line of an expository article we'll be reading today. Does this sentence make sense to you? Perhaps not since it's been taken out of context, meaning there's no headline or any other information to help us understand what is going on. The first thing we probably need to know though is what constitutes expository writing. The definition of expository means to expound, set forth, or explain. So basically it provides information. Now that we have established what expository writing is, let's look again at the first sentence. As with any writing, the writer wants to draw the reader into his world. And one of the ways that is commonly done at the beginning is to provide a hook, something that will hook the reader's interest. And hopefully that is what is done. I find it interesting that you can understand what is happening in this sentence without having more information. We don't know if the he involved is a person or an animal. Uh, Okay, hold on, I'm going to admit somebody. Hi, Raphael, make yourself at home. Uh, let me, can he see this, can you see the Pear Deck link? If you can, click on that and join that link. Uh, I don't know if you heard any of that. So, click on Pear Deck link. Did you get that, Raphael? You can answer yes or no in the... Wait, what happened? Hi. Hello. So uh, you can, can you see the Pear Deck link there in the chat? So click on the little chat icon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you click on that, keep this screen open because that's where your audio will come from. And then you can join the Pear Deck link and see the slideshow lesson. I'm Miss Luke. I'm the one who's given the lesson today. Oh, no, no, you're, you're presenting. Oh, okay. I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's fine. So you can end presentation and then just click on the Pear Deck link and hopefully it will just take you to the slideshow. Okay. Yes. Why well, don't let me click on it? Did it Yeah, it won't let me click on it. Oh. I can see it, but it won't let me click on it. I don't really know what to do about that. Um, you can still listen, I guess. Um, All right. Oh, okay. And Miss, try that one. Miss Cassidy put it in a second time. Hopefully that one will work. Thank you, Miss Cassidy. I was actually just getting ready yeah, to do that. <laughs> All right, so um, I just started the lesson. I was on the, the first major slide that says, what is expository writing? And I don't really want to read it again, but basically expository writing is writing that informs. And, uh, and, and, the, and was talk, I was talking about the first sentence of the article that we're going to read, which is, he needed a little push before speeding backward down a slide. So we may not know who it is, but we know what they are doing. And um, so let's continue on to the next slide. So here's the rest of the first paragraph. Once in the water, he popped his head up for one last look, and then he was gone. The wayward emperor penguin known as Happy Feet was back home in Antarctic waters 
after an extended sojourn spent capturing hearts in New Zealand. So here's your first question. Uh, uh, is this event happening at the beginning, middle, or end of Happy Feet's story? Explain your answer, and if you can, give some evidence from the text. Like what words or phrase in the story causes you to think that this event is happening at the beginning, the middle, or the end of the little penguin story? Hi, is Gustavo here yet? Do I need to recopy that Pear Deck link again, which is fine. Hi, Gustavo, uh, it, try, I'm gonna copy this link address and give it to you again. So join with the Pear Deck link, leave this screen open and you should see our lesson. I miss Luke. And we are answering this question. So I've got two of four responses. I'm going to wait for a couple more and then I'll look at them. We can look at them and then we'll go on to the next slide. So right now what you're looking at is the first paragraph and you're trying to decide if this is the beginning or the middle or the end of his story. Okay, I have three responses. I think that's good. I'm going to go ahead and show the responses. Oh, the end, because it says he's back home. Oh, very good. And the end, because he popped his head up for one last time. Excellent. Oh, and it's the end, because it tells he's back home. Very good, guys. Excellent use of text evidence, if I do say so. I'm pretty sure it is the end. So now we're going to look at some of the of the uh, vocabulary. Um, I wasn't sure if you were familiar with the term wayward. Um, so what do you think that means? The wayward penguin known as Happy Feet was back home. And also, uh, just out of curiosity, does if you do know it, great. If you do not know it, does it stop you from understanding uh, what is being said? Would you need to know what it meant to, you know, understand what was going on in the article? Just, I'm curious about that. You could maybe put that in the text, I mean, in the chat box if you wanted. It's not urgent. Or you could just say something. That is okay. So choose an option. It's multiple choice. Got three of uh, five responses. All right, I'm going to show the responses. Um, one person chose disobedient, one chose manageable, and one chose forward. Um, the correct answer is disobedient. Um, I, I kind of struggled with what to put. I wanted these to be one word responses. So um, wayward does mean disobedient, but as with many things, it can mean have several different meanings. And in this instance, it probably means he's like going in the wrong, he's in the wrong place. Um, so, you know, he got turned around. Uh, and then for the second one, I chose 
an antonym, and then four one just has the word award in it. So something similar. It's what they call a distractor. All right, so what do you think the word sojourn means? And here's this sentence, after an extended sojourn in New Zealand. Um, I like the word. I actually used to live on a street called sojourn, so I am somewhat familiar with it. But it's not a word we use a lot in daily life. And as a matter of fact, that's one thing about reading that's kind of lovely, and that's how you actually expand your vocabulary. Because nobody, no matter how well educated or poorly educated we, educated, we use a more limited number of vocabulary when we're talking than when we read. So what do you think that word might mean? Okay, I'm going to show the responses. Okay, uh, one with proceed, one with temporary, and one with linger. Okay, very good. The actual meaning is temporary. Uh, sojourn means a brief stay. So, um, uh, uh, so you notice that they used it with the word extended. So he was there briefly because he was, you know, m moved to somewhere else. You know, but he wasn't there. He, you know, I think he was there about three weeks. I don't know. So very good. Um, and the main thing is, is that that you stopped for a moment and thought about what it might mean, in, in, the word itself, and then also in context. All right. Now we're going to look at. Uh, we're moving on from the the hook and the introduction into the supporting sentences. Miss um, Colon gave a lesson on writing a paragraph a couple of weeks ago, and so these are sent, uh, and in hers, she talked about the sentences that support the main idea or the thesis or the theme. And so now we're moving on into that part of paragraph or, or of writing. So these are words that, these are sentences or paragraphs that go more into detail about what happened to Happy Feet. Uh, I'm gonna read these next two paragraphs. Happy Feet was released into the ocean south of New Zealand so then you notice that they did not take him back to Antarctica, which is what I thought, um, uh, even though I've read this several times. On Sunday, more than two months after he came ashore on a beach nearly 2,000 miles from home and became an instant celebrity. Speaking from a satellite phone aboard the research vessel Tangaroa, Wellington Zoo veterinarian Lisa Argila said Happy Feet's release went remarkably smoothly given that the boat was being tossed about 25 foot swells in the unforgiving Antarctic Ocean. All right, so I'm meeting Kino. All righty, I'm going to copy the Pear Deck link for this person. I don't see them though. Oh, here we go. Hi, I'm Miss Luke. I'm giving the lesson today. I'm giving you a Pear Deck link, which you will see uh, in the chat. So if you click on that, it will take you to our slides and the Pear Deck uh, lesson. And leave this tab open, because that will give you audio. All right? If you have any questions, just let me know. You can either say something or you can type something in the chat. All righty, so um, we read paragraphs two and three and so now we know more. Now we know that this is a penguin and that he, and we, well, we learned that in paragraph one and that he was released back into the ocean. So we do know that that was the end of the story uh, and that the story started two months earlier when he washed ashore on a beach 2000 miles from home. Uh, and that the releasing him went smoothly, although they were in uh, choppy waters. Did somebody have a question? Okay. All right, on to the next one. So this is another, more vocab. So looking at it in context, what do you think the author meant by the phrase, unforgiving Antarctic Ocean? I did not make this a paradox response, but we can talk or you can put something in the chat. So why would they refer to the Antarctic as unforgiving? Can an ocean be forgiving or unforgiving? If not, what do they mean? 
we basically call that, I'm going to give this as a gimme, I'm just going to give this to you, is that's called um, personification, because being able to forgive is a human quality. And we gave that to something that is not human. But it, but it's, but it's descriptive. So does anybody want to tell you, tell us what you think an unforgiving ocean might be? Do you can type it in the in the chat. You don't have to say anything. All righty, that's fine. It's cool. Let's go on to the next one. Paragraphs four and five, Argila said crew members from the boat carried the penguin inside his custom built crate, which you can see a picture of there in the corner, to the stern of the ship for his final send off about 50 nautical miles north of remote Campbell Island. The crew had already cut the engines and put in place a canvas slide that they soaked with water from a hose. But when they opened the door of the crate, the penguin showed no interest in leaving. Um, in that first paragraph, when it says the stern of the ship, um, if you do not know that, I want you to th think about whether or not that would stop you from understanding the story. The same with 50 nautical miles. Um, I don't feel that they would. They are obviously, well, nautical terms that describe one, the stern of the ship is a particular place on the ship. I'm not even sure where it is. I think it's the rear. Um, and then a nautical mile is a little longer than just a, the regular kind of mile that we use. So there is, there he is in, in the doorway of his little crate. And he's like, what? You know, he's got everything he needs. He's got ice, four walls, and fish on demand. So he's like, I, I see no need to leave. Paragraph six, seven, and eight, I needed to give him a little tap on his back. So again, that circles back to the very first sentence of our story, Argila said. The penguin slipped down the slide on his stomach bottom first, she said. He resurfaced about six feet from the boat, took a look up at the people aboard, and then disappeared beneath the surface. I was really happy to see him go, Argila said. The best part of my job is when you get to release animals back into the wild where they are supposed to be. Okay, so... Um, says here, choose an option. What, what, what was my question? I don't even know. Anybody else want to respond to that? Got one of four responses. Oh, three. Oh, yeah, I remember what I asked. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's got, I thought it was on the next slide. My apologies. So it was, uh, is this have to do with the penguin slipped down the slide on his stomach? So let's look. Yeah, very good guys. You have been well taught by your English teachers. That is an example of alliteration. Um, <clears throat> often we think of it as being used in poetry, but as you can see, it works very well uh, in uh, prose also. And there's a picture of happy feet, literally happy feet on Pekka Pekka Beach, which is where he landed. It's where he came ashore. I love the way he looks so proud, like he's in the military. Uh, the three foot tall aquatic bird was found June 20 on Pekka Pekka Beach, about 40 miles northwest of New Zealand's capital, Wellington. It had been 44 years since an emperor penguin was last spotted in the wild in New Zealand. At first, converse, conservation authorities said they would wait and let nature take its course with the penguin. But it soon became clear the bird's condition was deteriorating as he scooped up beaks full of sand and swallowed, 
likely mistaken it for snow, which emperor penguins eat for its moisture when in, in, in Antarctica. And I, I, in my research, I'm pretty sure I even came across a picture of him scooping up the sand, um, which, uh, and apparently he ended up with about six pounds of it in his body. I don't know how he managed to live even through that. And one of my questions when I was reading this was, why did they wait so long? I mean, obviously they didn't want to maybe, you know, rush in the first 24 hours, but I think I might have gone a little earlier than four days. Um, so you might, one thing you might want to ask yourself is why did they wait? Uh, well, it says so they could let nature take its course. One thing that we do know about animals in the wild is it's really better to leave them there. The human and animal interaction needs to be handled very carefully. I remember uh, seeing a documentary one time about these animals. I, maybe they were cranes or something, but the human caretakers even had like crane, like costumes that they would put on so that the baby birds would not know that they were being fed by humans. Um, humans kind of have a bad history of like just jumping in and taking over and it's not always an animal's best interest but I guess they could see he wasn't going back in the water and he clearly was off course something was a little off with his GPS system his internal GPS system so they scooped, swooped in to, to kind of help him with the world watching authorities finally took action moving the penguin to the Wellington Zoo four days after he was discovered. At the zoo, the three and a half year old bird underwent numerous stomach flushing procedures to remove sand from his digestive system. He was given a makeshift home in a room that the zoo staff kept filled with a bed of ice so he wouldn't overheat. And there he is in his little tiny enclosure. Argilis said the final boat journey, which began last Monday and ran into terrible weather, which we already knew because we know they're in the unforgiving Antarctic Ocean, was difficult for her. She got seasick and to the crew. The one who seemed least bothered, she said, was Happy Feet, who rolled with the swells, slept standing up and took nips at the crew and they fed him fresh fish. Another example of alliteration. Now that Happy Feet had been nursed back to health, Argila said his chances are as good as they are for any other penguin in the wild. He swam away, not caring about us anymore, Argila said. And I want you to notice that these last, these two paragraphs on this slide are one sentence each. Whenever we start learning how to write, par write paragraphs in middle school, I think our teachers give us things like, uh, make your paragraph should be at least five to seven sentences long. Well, I've seen paragraphs that were an entire page, and obviously here's a paragraph that's two words. And uh, so I kind of want you to notice that so you can kind of incorporate longer and shorter sentences and paragraphs into your writing style. Um, there is no really hard and fast rule. It's simply a matter of judging. It's, it's a matter of pacing in a way. And I believe that's what this person here is doing um, because she paused. And by making that one paragraph, they incorporate a pause into it. We are forced to pause along with her and waiting for her final paragraph or her final statement. And the story does not end here. There's one more line. So how would you end this story? So you can take a minute to think about it. It can be anything you want. It's open-ended. There's literally no right or wrong answer. Sorry, that's a printer. Might be able to hear that in the background, I don't know.
All right, did anybody answer that? Okay, so let's look at the responses. He would travel back once every year. Oh, I like that. No, because he, he liked the people. She paused to look back. Oh, I like that too. Good job, guys. You know, even though, you know, you, oh, are you going to continue that? All right. You know, the one where it says he would travel back once every year, that makes me think of the man who had the lion and they had to release the lion cubs into the wild. And then they have the video somewhere on the Internet you can find where he went back to visit and the lion cub, the lion remembered him. It's really sweet. OK, very good. He paused to look back where he started and now is going back home. Yeah. I mean, that's life, right? You know, that's nostalgia. That's that's us every day. We pause to look back and then we go forward. Well done. Concluding sentence. And that's a good thing, she said. Once I, and one reason I wanted just to read, so that's how she ended it. Because she was like, he, di he, di he didn't look back and that's a good thing. And the reason was, was because they had to intervene but they didn't keep him from living out his life in the environment he was born into. Um, as humans, one reason why, you know, we're always, we love to make those connections with animals and we always want to know that that's kind of returned. Obviously they don't have feelings perhaps the way we do, but we touch the little penguin's life and we'd like to know that it was meaningful. So that I like your, your endings guys. All right, so one reason I wanted us to read and examine the story is to look closer at its structure. When you first read this story, you might not realize or understand that the story is not told linearly or in a straightforward way. It starts at the end, moves to the beginning, and then returns to the end. So it's basically what we, it has what we call a non-linear structure, although I did not type that word in. Why do you think the author chose to write it that way? Um, you do not, are not you do not are not expected to give a response, you know. But you know, I want you to be thinking about that. Does it make it more or less effective or interesting? Is it more difficult to understand? Happy feet is released. So there he is going down the slide. I did not include the video, but there is a video on YouTube you can find. You can put in Happy Feet or Happy Feet New Zealand. Uh, as we continue on, I think I did put uh, how I Googled what the four words that I used to Google to do my research for this. Um, but you can see a couple of this was widely covered it was, uh, 10 years ago. And there's even some information about what happened to him or what, you know, afterwards. People were very interested. Uh, I believe they did attach a little uh, monitor to his leg. But uh they quit receiving signals from it about a week after they released him. As I said, I also thought they perhaps took him back to New Zealand, but, and this is after I went back three and four times looking for information. I found one article that said they were, it would be illegal for them to take him back to Antarctica because he could possibly have picked up some, uh, some diseases along the way. So they took him out to what they call the Campbell Islands. I think that's part of the story. Uh, so they took him out there. So they took him about halfway and then released him. So um, we, we will never know what happened. You know, he, I don't even know what a penguin's lifespan is. As, as I said, this came, story came out in 2011. So I don't even know how old he'd be. I think they at least lived that long. But there he is splashing into the water. And you can even see in the video, you can see one of the veterinarians or whoever, the crew member, give him a little push. And then he slides feet first on his tummy back into the water and then he swims away okay so here's a map and one of your activities will be to draw a map with a timeline there's not going to be much to the map uh, you can see antarctica and then you can see new zealand up there it's tiny to the 
to the right of Australia, tried to put a little arrow there. So you could, you know, just all you had to do is take a sheet of paper. Uh, your teacher can give you some information as to how they want it done or how they want it returned to them. But you could just take a piece of notebook paper, draw your little map, draw some arrows. You, there's only no more than four to five events that happen in the story. You could put them at the top or down the side, take a picture of it and, uh, and return it to your teacher. And uh, now let's go to the next one. So this is the part where we talk about the activities. Um, let me see, you're gonna do one activity, oh, excuse me, you're gonna do activity one and then you'll do two others of your choosing. So I do want everyone to do the map with the timeline of Happy Feet's journey. Now this one will be linear. It will not follow the structure of the story. Um, and then your second option is to draw a cartoon strip of what happened to him. You can also rewrite the opening paragraph with your own hook or a different perspective. Write a short story. And by short, I mean short, you know, half a page to a page. I do that on perhaps a Google Doc that you can share with your teacher. Telling what happened to the penguin after he's released back into the Antarctic Ocean. You can write a headline. Uh, and I am including the actual uh, story with the original headline. You'll see that, but you should write your own if you choose that one. Use the words wayward, sojourn, and unforgiving at least once somewhere in your assignment. Optionally, you can read the newspaper article, which should be in your Google, Google Classroom. Um, you can also find out some more about Happy Feet. I googled Happy Feet Penguin New Zealand. Then you can briefly summarize the findings of an article that you read from an, uh, or, or from a video that you watch. So I think, oh, there's more. Oh yeah, so this is kind of important. So we had the lesson and how to write a paragraph. So I wanted to quickly review that before we finish uh, as there are several writing assignments and I hope you'll choose at least one of them. Uh, you see, the essence of the, of the paragraph writing lesson is as follows. A paragraph is a collection of sentences which express a main point or idea. It has three parts, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Those three parts are called the hook, the supporting sentences, and the conclusion. For ELD1, when you're writing, this is a narrative example like for the short story. It might look something like this. Happy Feet landed in the water with a splash and a funny look on his face. He was back in the salty water he knew was his home, but none of his penguin friends were nearby. In which direction should he swim? He didn't really want any more adventures. He just wanted to go home. And for uh, example two, for ELD2, it might look something like this. Happy feet splashed into the water. He still wasn't sure where he was, but he knew it felt good to be back in the salty water he had grown up in. With a brisk flap of his water wings, he shot off into the murky, fathomless waters of the ocean. So that's the lesson. If you have any questions at all, please let me or one of your teachers uh, know what they are. We will be glad to help you. I'm going to stop presenting now. All righty, so do you have do you have any questions? Anybody? Is anybody still there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So was that clear? Was there anything that was not clear? No, ma'am. Yeah, we do. Okay. All right. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I'm going to release you. Uh, this this uh, less this slideshow, including the one the part that's being recorded, which I think I will stop recording, will be in your Google Classroom. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now.